Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Calder. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today and the truth of the Word of God separate from all human traditions and false teachings. Now, we're going to cover some things. If you've heard of the latest report of the Catholic Church pedophilia in Pennsylvania, it is one of the most shocking things that has happened. Now, we'll provide a link for you so you can read the Attorney General's report on the thousands and thousands of children, mostly boys and some girls. We do have more tonight on the Catholic Church sex abuse scandal. A Pennsylvania grand jury says more than 300 priests sexually abused more than a thousand children and likely thousands more over seven decades. Nikki Batiste explains how church leaders protected the priests, putting children at risk. A trove of documents containing allegations and admissions of sexual abuse was kept locked up in what the church calls its secret archives, with the only key in the bishop's hands. The cover-up made it impossible to achieve justice for the victims. Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro laid out a pattern of consistent decades-long cover-up across the six dioceses. The files contained strategies that were practically a playbook for concealing the truth. Among the tactics for church record keeping, use euphemisms, never say rape, say inappropriate contact or boundary issues. Even if a priest is raping children, keep providing housing and living expenses. Above all, don't tell the police. Handle it like a personnel matter in-house. As church officials protected predator priests, careers continued to rise. Many have been promoted. Bishop Whirl is now Cardinal Whirl. Washington, D.C. Archbishop Cardinal Donald Whirl presided over 32 accused priests during his 18 years at the Pittsburgh Diocese. He sat down with us the night before the report's release. During my tenure, we acted very appropriately uh, with uh, many times removal from ministry totally and completely. But according to the grand jury, in 1991, Worrell reassigned an accused priest, Ernest Payone, to the Reno Diocese. In 1995, he returned George Zerwas, a member of a pedophile ring, to ministry. Victims filed a lawsuit against you and a few others, saying you were conspiring to cover up the abuse. Any truth to that during your time in Pennsylvania? I would have to say that's, that's just totally, totally false. And this has been pervasive for centuries. And everyone thinks, well, we'll reform. There is no way that can be reformed. Why? Because it is not of God. I'm going to repeat that again. So if you've been a Catholic, and even Protestants, you're included in this. If you think that this is anti-Catholic, you need to ask the question, why are Catholics anti-Bible and anti-the true God? It's like people who proclaim that homosexuality is a sin, which the Bible says it is. You're a homophobe. Turn the coin around. They are heterophobes. There are six verses, six verses, six verses in the Bible that mention homosexuality out of 40,000 verses. This world had been turned up, side, down, and backwards, and there is no way, no way that it can be reformed because it never was of God in the first place. 
Now, if you know enough about history, and if you know enough about the truth of the Bible, you will understand how true that is. But you need to get this grand jury report in Pennsylvania. It will make you literally sick to your stomach and upset in your mind. It is so pervasive, so many lies, there is nothing, nothing that can change that. Now, I'll show you why. I'm not going to get into the details of this on Church at Home. I may bring out some general facts a little later. But what we need to do is let you know the very basis of church at home is to bring people back to God, to the truth of the Bible, to the truth of his word, and everything that you need to understand about God. Now, let's first of all compare something most important. Let's look at what it says of the end-time churches of God and compare that with the end-time description of the Roman Catholic Church and all of her daughter religions of the pagan world. Let's come to the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation is all about the end-time events just before the return of Jesus Christ. And we're living in those days. And if you don't think that everything is upside down and backward, you're living in a dream world. Now, here in America, it's probably true in every country of the world. But in America, at least there's some attempts to get rid of the deep state, get rid of the lying, get rid of all the false politics, and look at the kickback that is coming because people simply want the truth. People simply want representatives to represent them and not their own interests and not the interest of the worldly powers behind them. So likewise, Whenever anyone brings up anything that contradicts what the, the normal state or church definition is, they get all angry, and they start coming back with accusations, which are not true. So before we get started, let's examine what it says that identifies the true people of God, the true churches of God, that love God, that keep his commandments, that serve him in truth and faith. Let's come to Revelation 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints, because we're told to endure to the end. Here are the ones who keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus Christ. Now look at that statement and analyze it for just a minute. It takes no faith to sin, and sin is the transgression of the laws of God. It takes faith to keep the commandments of God. Now, I've covered this many times, so we're not going to dwell on that. And if you don't know the Ten Commandments, you better get back to the commandments of God and learn them by heart and understand he means every single word that is there. And also understand this. Jesus Christ, when he started his ministry, said in the most emphatic terms, do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the commandments. I have not come to abolish but to fulfill, and that means to make spiritually complete. Now, we'll compare this with traditions, because the Catholic Church is founded holy. That is spelt with a W-H. O-L-L-Y, not holy in that it's from God, on tradition 
and the teachings of men. You're never going to find the true God that way. You'll find the God of this world that way, and his name is Satan the devil. Now, let's come to Revelation 12. There's coming a time when Satan the devil is going to be angry with the church and he's going to come and persecute it and slaughter those who are true Christians. Are you willing to stand for that? Now, a little sidebar here I want you to understand. We're developing a complete history as much as possible from 100 A.D. to 1600 A.D. of the churches of God. And they all kept the commandments of God. And they all kept the Sabbath of God. And they all resisted the Roman Catholic Church and everything about it unto death. So let's read it here. Verse 17. Then the dragon was furious with the woman, that's the true church, and went to make war with the rest of her seed, and that war is going to come, because Satan the devil cannot stand the truth and cannot stand the righteousness of God. Now notice how it describes them, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. That is, understanding prophecy and prophecy to warn. Now let's look at the description of the world's religious system centered on Roman Catholicism. And let's see the difference. The woman in Revelation 12 is the true churches of God. The woman in Revelation 17 is the mother of harlots and lies and deceit and killing. At which, when you get this report from the Pennsylvania Attorney General, it is revealing all the lies that the bishops, that the archbishops, that the cardinals, yea, and the popes have used to cover up pedophilia because they are corrupt from the soles of their feet to the top of their heads. And even though they may speak nice, and even though they may cover up all of their evil by having Catholic hospitals and Catholic charities, don't be fooled by that fraudulent front. Here is the Bible truth. Verse 1, And one of the seven angels who had the seven vials came and spoke with me, that is, to John the apostle, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great whore who sits upon many waters. A whore. Every sexual perversion in the world has happened through all of these pagan religions that all came out of Babylon. Now, if you don't have the book, The Two Babylons, you can download it, or you can email us and we'll send you a copy of it. Because you see, what is palmed off as Christian in this world is not Christian at all. It is Babylonian paganism. Little sidebar. Protestants, not so bad. But still, even if they may be closer to some truth, if you don't have the whole truth, how's your standing with God? It's like this. If you have a car and you have the key to the trunk and you have the key to the front door, but you don't have the combination of how to start it and make it go, what good does some of that do for you to drive the car? Nothing. It's like the woman who baked the chocolate cake and forgot to put in the baking powder, so it didn't rise up. So she called them brownies. That's not a cake. So let's read it. 
Verse 15, Then he said to me, The waters that you saw where the horror sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. Now you look at a globe, and look at all the nations, and consider all the religions. Does this not describe them? Buddhism, Hinduism, Catholicism, Islam, Orthodox, all of the native religions. Here's another factor. Because if you go back to the segments I did on Come Out of Her, My People, you have to come out of Babylon the Great. That's why we have church at home. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. They are in league with the Roman Catholic Church, and it shows right in this report by the Attorney General that those politicians, some of them in Pennsylvania, did not move ahead to press charges because they needed the favor of the Catholic Church to help keep them in office. So much for truth and serving the people that vote for you. Remember what we read in Revelation 18? Let's just turn there for a minute. And it involves businesses too. Guess who one of the largest stockholders in the world is? The Vatican. Guess who has a bank which is never under regulation of international banking system? The Vatican. Guess who has ambassadors from every nation on earth in Rome, the Vatican. How powerful is the Vatican? The Vatican refers to the Vatican City, an independent sovereign territory located in Rome. It is the home of the leader of the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, as well as the Holy See, which is the government of the Catholic Church. Since the Vatican is an absolute monarchy, its leader is the Pope but its legislative branch is operated by a collection of cardinals called the Pontifical Commission for Vatican City State. The Vatican is one of the few micronations recognized as its own state by the United Nations and most other countries. The Vatican City is 0.17 square miles, which is less than a quarter of New York's Central Park. Despite only being home to about 850 people, its global sphere of influence is huge. The Pope is the spiritual leader to more than one billion Catholics worldwide. In 2014, Forbes called him the fourth most powerful person internationally. The Vatican is politically powerful for its size. It's a non-member state permanent observer in the UN, which grants them privileges not usually held by small territories. They're sometimes allowed to debate in the General Assembly and participate in meetings attended by full state members. If terrorists were to attack the Vatican, Italy would be the first to respond and protect the region. The Vatican is also diplomatically on good terms with several major Western powers. So far, the ornately decorated religious capital has remained virtually untouched throughout several wars, and although the Vatican City is one of the smallest states in the world with a small population and no active military, it remains a powerful voice among much larger nations due to its religious influence over 17% of the global population. That's the worldly system you need to come out of. What are you going to do? Now, verse 3, Because all nations have drunk of the wine of the fury of her fornication, all blurred out because of the false doctrines and traditions of men and Satan the devil, and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the power of her luxury. God says, come out of her, my people. Are you the people of God? Are you hanging off on the side? Hanging off on the side, you're not the people of God. That's why God commands you to repent and be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit of God. That's what it's all about. And we're coming down to some of the worst times in the world, and you better be right with God, or you're going to go through things that are going to be absolutely, inexplicably demonstrable to bring to you with any verbiage that I have at my command. 
Now back to Revelation 17. It identifies her. Then he carried me away in the spirit to a wilderness, and I saw a woman upon a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns full of the names of blasphemy. Everything against God. Everything against Christ. But still profess his name. We're going to talk about that a little bit here. And a woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and pearls and precious stones and a golden cup in her hand filled with the abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And across her forehead a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and of the abominations of the earth, and is not pedophilia an absolute hideous abomination abomination. Grown men in the name of God, taking young boys and girls and perverting them and destroying their lives forever. The Vatican says there are two words that express its reaction to the litany of crimes laid out in that nearly 900-page report. They are shame and sorrow, crimes the Vatican acknowledges can shake the faith of believers. After two days of silence, the Vatican delivering a message to the Pennsylvania abuse victims from Pope Francis. The Holy Father, as he's shown in Chile, wants to put the victims first, make sure that they know he is on their side. Against the men who did things the Vatican says were criminal and morally reprehensible. There has to be accountability, not only for the abusers, but also for those who permitted the abuse. The extent of the depravity uncovered by a Pennsylvania grand jury is staggering. Fondling, rape, and physical abuse perpetrated by 300 predator priests on more than 1,000 child and teenage victims over a 70-year period. I definitely feel the sorrow for the children that were affected by the scandal. One of the alleged victims, James Faluzak. The Pope's response has failed this victim and many others yet again. After years of revelations involving priests violating young people, survivor groups want more than words. Mere words are insulting at this point. It is time for the Pope to start removing culpable bishops. The problem is not just the leaders in Pennsylvania. Allegations that the former powerful Cardinal of Washington, Theodore McCarrick, abused boys, seminarians, and young priests have Catholics asking how could he rise to become a prince of the church. This morning, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops promising answers with a full investigation led by the Vatican, along with a group of predominantly lay people. And do you know what those pedophilia priests did so that all the other priests would know who were the molested children that could be molested again by others? They gave them a pure gold, golden cross that they could wear to church. Can you imagine the depths of the perversion of that? The priests gave their favored boys gifts gold crosses to wear as necklaces. The crosses were markings of which boys had been groomed for abuse. Hundreds of priests in the Catholic Church, both past and present, are accused of sexual abuse in a grand jury report just released. The allegations date back decades and there could be thousands of additional victims. You see, church officials routinely and purposefully described the abuse as horseplay and wrestling, and inappropriate contact. It was none of those things. It was child sexual abuse, including rape, committed by grown men, priests, against children. Now come back here to Matthew 7. In verse 13, we've gone over this before. But now maybe with some of the things we're covering today, and you go get that report involving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of priests and thousands of children. So now's the time to quit playing games. Now's the time to quit being a religious hobbyist. Now's the time to really get serious with God. So I'm going to ask you the question, what will you do? Well, we've got the book, Lord, What Should I Do? 
will send it to you, no cost. And the booklet, Why Christianity is Failing in America, because they have opened the door to Satan the devil, and he is coming in because what I have to bring after we got done with this is going to be far more astonishing. Matthew 7 and verse 13, Enter in through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many, that means the majority of the people, are those who enter through it. For narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and few are those who find it. You've got to search for it. You've got to seek it. You've got to want it. You've got to desire it, you see? These are the times we are living in. And so we have a little more prosperity now because at least we have a president who is more honest than anybody who's ever been in the presidency trying to do things to help the people and serve the people. A billionaire not taking a single penny from the people and not beholden to all the evil of government and religion. So if we have a little prosperity for a while, don't let that deceive you into thinking that things are going to get better. If they improve for a while, be thankful and rejoice because God is giving us time to make sure we're right with him before the bottom of the whole thing falls out. And when it does, if you haven't come to God, it may be too late. Now, you don't want that to happen to you. Now, to help you also understand where we are in history, we have the book America and Britain, a magnificent book indeed, by our editor, Phil Neal. So we'll send all of those to you at no cost. Now, in the next segment, we're going to pick it up here, and we're going to see how you cannot change and reform that system. You must come out of it. So until next time... Thank you for inviting me into your home. So this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone.